uh, of course, associated with any brand is, is the way to go in the first place. So if you can be associated with a broadcaster, you know, the, the, the YTV children brand or, or whatever, that's going to help you launch your project right away. But that's not necessary. Um, and you don't even have to have much money to market because you can market online for next to nothing. And there's you know dozens of ways to market through blogs and through search engine or, um, optimization and through links with the right projects and through Facebook and through Twitter and through all the social media, none of which costs you any money. And if you put together a really good marketing campaign, you know, in a day or two, if you're any good, you have a viral campaign online and you will have millions of people looking at your work, if you're good. If it's good, it'll work. If, if you don't have millions of people working, uh, looking at it, then you're likely it's not that good or your marketing campaign wasn't the right one. But um, it's, it's really exciting that suddenly you don't have to spend millions of dollars to do a marketing campaign. It can all be done for next to nothing and using all of the techniques uh, that the online and, and new media can provide and reaching right directly to your audience one-on-one. -on -one. It's great. So there's no more excuses anymore. <laughs> if your project is good, lots of people will see it. If you're, if you're aiming for a more traditional, older audience who's used to watching their documentaries on, on television, the chances are they'll never find it online. That's true at this stage. But remember that the kids who are kids today who are getting all of their entertainment online are going to be the older people a few years from now. And they're not going to suddenly start watching television if that's not what they're used to. They're going to still be using online. So we have to plan for the future and assume that our audiences are growing up and the usage that we see now in the younger groups, we'll see again, it'll continue in the older groups as well. There's so many fantastic subjects for documentaries and certainly the, the shelf space is so limited with broadcasters that it would be a shame if documentary filmmakers couldn't take advantage much more of, of the web. I think it's ideal for them. And, and um, not only just for a streamed, you know, hour-long classical documentary, but all of the material that goes with a documentary, all the research, all the outtakes, all the characters you meet, all the stuff that goes with it behind the scenes can all be put online and make the project a whole different project um, and give um, audiences a really in-depth, much greater experience than simply watching the traditional one-hour television program or, or film. So um, I think documentaries have huge potential online and I really hope that everyone takes advantage of it. Although interestingly I'm finding that documentary filmmakers of all the, all the filmmakers we deal with are more reluctant to go online. It's just, it's, it's a very strange thing. I don't understand why because they're so obvious candidates for it. But they're very entrenched in traditional filmmaking and um, figuring out how to do it online seems to be a challenge that they're all resisting. So you better help them overcome that. <laughs> I go to all the documentary festivals and forums and conferences and I keep, we keep on doing training programs to give them ideas and explain how it really works. And it's just the strangest thing that they are so reluctant. They're very entrenched and passionate about their subjects, but, but still, maybe it's a result of their schooling, the training, um, lack of experience in the new media world where they do, I guess, lose a certain amount of control, which maybe is a natural fear for documentary filmmakers, because once you start doing it online, um, it's not something that they've been trained to do. So, <laughs> we are on the 17th floor here, isn't it amazing? <laughs> um, so as documentary filmmakers, um, they aren't trained to do new media, they don't understand it, and they usually have to partner with a new media company, and, and these are producers in the new media area who think non-linearly, which is very different from the linear thinking of a traditional filmmaker. So um, maybe there's a reluctance to partner with them and to think that way. Uh, we're pushing, we're always pushing, we're encouraging them. I'm actually very surprised at a Hot Docs Festival this year. There's no sessions on um, new media. Yeah? Uh, there were in previous years, but it's surprising to me that half the conference isn't, ex isn't about how to take a documentary project and, and take it online. So um, 
it's, it's, it's a funny thing that it's such a slow uptake in the documentary community. Um, it's true that it costs almost as much to do the online project as it does to do a one-hour documentary. So we're talking in budgets of $350,000, $400,000 to do a really good interactive online project, which is often the budget if, of, a, of a documentary. Um, so you do have to raise twice the amount of money um, from limited resources. But I think if the material is great, it's, it's going to pay off. You know, if it really is good material, it's, the market isn't just Canada. And that's a mentality that we all have to get out of because documentary filmmakers are still perceiving it that way. I'm making a Canadian one-hour documentary for a Canadian broadcaster. And if I'm lucky, it might sell somewhere else in the world. But, but why not say I'm making an international documentary for you know, three billion people around the world who all have access to the internet? and figure out that model and where the revenue is and how it can pay off. And I think that's a whole new world, you know? But that takes a new way of thinking. Well, money is definitely one, no question about it. Um, dependence on the broadcasters is definitely another one. Um, the, the skills and the know-how, that whole training of, of new media producers, we, we still lack a number of new media producers. We have a certain core group that had developed over the years, but we can certainly use a lot more. Um, we do have some companies in Canada who have international reputations now. They're winning um, international interactive Emmy Awards for their interactive work. So we are leaders in the world, and we have a very good um, you know, credit rating basically around the world, especially if a project is funded by the Bell Fund. You know, it's got a reputation now that it must be good if it had Bell Fund money. Um, so the opportunities are there more than the constraints, I think. And the constraints are the same, film, TV, you know, broadcasters, money, what's new? <laughs> it's the same old problems. Um, but the opportunities to, to make leap over those hurdles and to think internationally and globally and um, and maybe you know figure out how to do it for less money. You know that's always an issue, but that can be done. It can always be done. Uh, I think I think uh, we just have to t take the risk. You know it's a bit of risk taking. So everybody has to decide that they're ready to take the risk because it is a new model and no one knows for sure how it's going to work. And we have to be a little entrepreneurial here, which is very un-Canadian of us, and um, lead the way. Show the world how to do it right.